Hey everybody, call me Felix, and last time on our El Nido food trip, we purchased the freshest king mackerel, or tanige, from one of the most beautiful fishing villages in El Nido. And it was a whopping king mackerel with an amazingly low wholesale price of just 600 pesos, or 12 US dollars. We served this tanige two ways. One is kinilao, or Filipino ceviche, and the other half grilled simply. I was never really a fan of tanige, truth be told, because to me, it tasted like a dense pasty swordfish, but this experience forever changed my thoughts on tanige, although I'll always insist on getting this fish extra fresh for all time. If you want to see our El Nido food trip thus far, go ahead and click on the El Nido master playlist on the far right hand corner. In this video, we return from our first day of island hopping, which included our remarkable first tanige lunch, but we were starting to get really hungry. With few restaurants open around El Nido town at the time, we were fortunate to find a Ukrainian restaurant serving up hearty Ukrainian classics. The place is called Odessa Mama, famous in El Nido town precisely because it's a Ukrainian restaurant in paradise. We got our lessons in Ukrainian food starting from the borscht or red beet soup with a side of smoky pork fat and garlic on bread to chase the hearty borscht with to stuff cabbage rolls with pork and rice. We also tried out Ukrainian dumplings, and unfortunately I cannot find the clip where I gave a review on it, so I'll just mention that our chicken liver pate stuffed Ukrainian dumplings was unapologetically savory, but I love the creamy texture to pair with that richness of the liver pate. So without further ado, here's the rest of our review on Odessa Mama. Enjoy! Okay, after our long island hopping tour and JP's looking at his own pictures and so is Warren, <laughs> We've come to a Ukrainian restaurant here in El Nido. It's been running for a long time and they're famous for craft beer. Now, unfortunately, they don't have dry stout, which is my favorite good beer. But instead, they got an IPA. So it says on the notes that it's a beer of light caramel brown color. Yes. It has a bitter and woodsy cup taste, multi and pine basic notes, smell of grapefruit with light mango and bright passion fruit. Oh, okay. It does smell more fruity. Bald spot. Smells like, um, yeah. I'm getting a little bit of like man mango, a mango sort of smell. More mango ma passion fruit. There's kind of something fruity about it. So this should, I hope, Hopefully it tastes nice and bright with a little bit of a um, caramel backbone. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Not really hoppy. I'm not hoppy. Are you mad? No. Or are you sad? I'm just saying it's not this hoppy. Oh, I thought you were not hoppy. Yeah. But you're sad. Yeah, sad ako sad sa funnel cake factory <laughs> and urban corn dog. Sad ako. Okay. So, um, yeah, the beer is not as hoppy enough as you know I, I um, expect it to be. It's not exactly like West Coast IPA. Um, not really dogfish head East Coast IPA either. Um, as far as like it being super malty. It's got a. It's more. Yeah, it's more like a cereal malt, kind of like yeah. I would say that. Yeah. I think a little more woodsy, less on the bitter for me. It's only like a teensy bitter edge, but not like mouth puckering bitter like we're used to back home uh, on the west coast especially okay but we ordered some Ukrainian specialties because Ukrainian restaurant right we're gonna split some dumplings with chicken liver pate oh, I love pate chicken liver yeah and then we have some borscht borscht yeah and it doesn't come with fried bacon it comes with pork fat that's a traditional Ukrainian way not fried bacon and bread with garlic and then some cabbage rolls. Okay. Right? And of course, JP and Warren have Long Island iced teas. Warren is becoming the Long Island connoisseur. So I wonder what he thinks about toast. all this. It's toast to a second day in Elmito. Second day. Is this only two days? Jeez, it seems like it was like longer than that. Well, yeah, I mean, 
this is the third night we're here. That's true, but the second first full day. We are definitely making use of every day. single minute of every day here. Yes. So. Yeah, we, yes, we should. We should. Yes. How is your Long Island, Warren? Uh, is it to your liking? Strength. Strength. Not, not so strong. <laughs> so again, who makes the best Long Island again? Again? Uh, Okada. Uh, yeah. Is Okada for you? No, it's not. It's the. Where's the place? It's very strong. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's an Okada. That's right. Okay. Oh, I'm getting hungry. I hope I can get some food soon. I'm drinking of this beer. Because we ate a lot of fish on the on there. And there's some very good tangigi, right? It was really good. Excellent. Yeah. It was awesome. Mm hmm Delicious. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, back in a bit. We'll have some food. Okay. All right, everyone. It's our first time eating borscht. borscht. A beet soup. Delicious. Uh huh. There's some bread and some garlic and some pork fat on the side. So we elected just to do the sour cream later. Per personal preference. Uh, yes. It's a nice, very deep red color. Mm hmm. You'll be forgiven to thinking there are all tomatoes in there, but that's really beets. I don't know if Warren will like this. Because I don't think he's ever had a beet before. Have you ever gotten a beet before? Beef? A beet. <laughs> like a beet on the beets. No. Beet. Is it tomato? No, beets are like a beet. It's like yeah. a daikon. It has a really earthy yeah, taste. That it's might really sweet, earthy. You might find it a little bit weird because yeah, it's kind of really it's not really a fruity kind of sweet. Yeah. It's very much a vegetal sweet. Like a sinkamas, right? Like sinkamas? Yeah, sinkamas. Sinkamas is, is a bit more mellow, isn't it? So he says, put the pork fat in here with the garlic as your side dish. Ah, oh, so more like a chaser the there. I get it. Okay, okay interesting. I'm gonna try it without the sour cream first. I'm gonna do it without sour cream first too. Warren? Are you gonna get right into it, huh? Just like. And I was watching. I was watching him. <laughs> Let's see how he thinks. Warren's first time to have borscht mm. as well. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Try it. Okay, time to try it. mine. It's good. Can the beef be beef broth with the beef broth? No, it's chicken broth. How do I explain this? Mm. Yeah, there's like. That nice kind of fresh because there's like a there are chunks of fresh beets in here so it kind of finishes like a, a very mild earthy sweetness mm. yeah well finishing clean the soup is really clean too it's chicken soup i believe i'm gonna have this as a side dish so after having one more spoonful of borscht Here's some pork fat with some garlic. I'm gonna dip a little bit of the soup in there. Just a teensy bit. And then follow it up. Okay, there you go. I like it. Very soup. Mm-hmm. That pork fat's almost like a really fatty, like a really fatty portion of portion of bacon. Mm -hmm. It has like a it, really well. it really has a chew. Like a layer of, there's a membrane on there, kind of like a layer of that you chunk, um, chew through. And then that garlic comes in nicely with that flavor. And that bread is also just fresh. I'm gonna add a bit of sour cream. Ooh, Bowie. Incorporate that sour cream in there. See how that changes. I don't know if it really, I think it adds just a bit more body, really. But I'm gonna just kind of leave it unincorporated a little bit. It really lifts the herbs in the soup. Yeah, the sour cream lifts those herbs in the soup too. So, kind of adds a different something to it. Okay, time to help myself to some gulupsi. Gulupsi, that's um, pork stuffed cabbage roll with vegetables and rice. Looks like some sour cream on top to me. That. 
see what the cross section looks like here. Some rice, definitely some vegetable, at least some pork, ground pork. Kind of reminds me if you took like a lasagna and you kind of mixed it with, you know, like the cap sweet cabbage from like a boiled soup, like a bulalo kind of thing, and put it all together. This is kind of what that tastes like. Really nice tomato flavor that's not too sour. Yeah, it's pretty much comfort food. Yep, cabbage roll. It's very comforting. Comfort food. Mm-hmm. Kind of tastes like well, if you boiled the cabbage and bulalo and bring out the sweetness. And then you add some sort of like lasagna. It's almost like what it tastes like. A good lasagna. Of course, there's no cheese in it. There's vegetable and rice. But the flavor kind of come, you know, that's what it kind of adds up to. All right, I'm gonna try these traditional Ukrainian dumplings. They look like they're stuffed in chicken liver pate. That's the flavor we got. They do them in different versions. The next thing, and perhaps the last, final thing we're gonna get is this smoked meat. This is chicken. chicken. And then it has some yogurt looking sauce over there. So I think I'll get a little bit of everything. Tomato. Spoon some of that on. It's an interesting savory sour cream sauce I got here. Eat this our own homemade crostini sort of thing. Yeah. Open face sandwich if you like. Okay. Is that just sour cream? It's a sour cream with an interesting twist. Mm hmm Yeah, that's definitely like there's a nice delicate smokiness that kind of comes more forward the more you chew it and the more you finish it. And that's what stops it from becoming like a Greek pita. Next time on our trip around El Nido, we're back on the water for a full day of island hopping in El Nido. This time we're going to a super secret island, or more accurately, a pair of super secret islands few tourists know about, and locals, especially the local fishermen, are very familiar with. We're taking the private speedboat this time because traveling to this super secret pair of islands is quite long, and that is one reason why this super secret place is indeed a super secret place. If you've seen my Tanige video, the one with the flashbacks and flash forwards regarding our fresh Tanige, you'll know that we spotted local fishermen who sold us a bigger, equally fresh Tanige as the day before on one of these super secret islands. So we're going on our first stop on the El Nido Super Secret Island Tour. Oh, didn't I mention this island hopping tour was of super secret places around El Nido? Well, let's just keep this a super secret amongst ourselves. And on that note, super secret schizoid society friend, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and best yet subscribe to the super secret schizoid society of S Alliteration, which is this channel and hit the bell icon for notifications and you'll know we're super secret friends if you're the only one hearing bells amongst those in the super secret inner circle and you won't miss a single food and travel adventure if you hit that bell icon. Until next time, keep cool but care and shall I project the world of super secret post horns? No, there's no need because remember, the empire never ended.